I don't know if it's technically legal, but it tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, imagine... Dave and Dom from Goldfish, it's such a pleasure to see your faces again. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Good Up FM Beats by Dan Dan Quarter. We're pre-recording this in uh, ahead of your scheduled release of a new single, Forever Free, that I'm so excited to hear. The last time I saw your faces, although I must admit it was in person, it was before I had ever been on a radio station ever. I was a waiter in a small restaurant in Devadakant and Perce uh, Perceptions of Pasha lived in my mother's car. And I served you guys, and you were absolutely delightful. And I Thank told goodness. the family WhatsApp group. And at the end, I, so I'm one of seven uh, people in the family, five children. And all six of them, including my father, who's a law lecturer, said, you're not allowed to let them leave until you get a signature on a napkin. And you guys gave it to me. So what a pleasure to see you all these years. Ah. I have a radio show, and we're going to play your single on Friday. It's Full wonderful. circle. How cool is that? It's incredible. That's amazing. Really happy. So where in America are you guys is, right now? We're in San Diego. Okay, I see uh, from some of your guys' social media that you're doing a lot of work with a really, really iconic performance space called the Belly Up Tavern. Yeah, we got yes. a, we gonna, it's gonna be our first gig. Okay, it's a live stream, so no one's gonna be there, but, well, besides the, the technical guys, but it's gonna be our first time back in a venue for <laughs> six months, woo -hoo. Can I get a whoop whoop? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. It's been pretty weird playing gigs only out of Dave's living room up until now. Yeah. So, and it's, <laughs> a, it's, a venue. it's a legendary venue. You know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers used to play there in the '80s when they were starting out. Like they would like drive down from LA to play shows there. So it's like, and like they've got these amazing posters all on the walls and it's a ton of history. Ton of history. Um, and we're going to be making some history as well. We're going to be playing a socially distanced show to nobody, at least in the venue. <laughs> I mean, that's probably the belly up walls are like, what is going on? Yeah, because yeah. people are practicing a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been yeah. thinking a lot about that uh, during COVID. Uh, so obviously, being in radio, a lot of friends of mine are musicians, but a lot of friends of mine are also comedians. And it's a similar relationship where you guys have spent years of your lives craving and loving this kind of communion moment of performing with and jawling with crowds of people who are loving uh, your music. And I'm sure you're loving the energy they're giving back. You guys must have gone such a cold turkey path and it must have felt <laughs> really rough in the last six months. I'm sure you kind of missed it and had a weird amount of pent up energy that you didn't know what to do with. Totally. For sure. I totally mean, was weird. Until we started actually live streaming again, you know, and then we were like, hey, we're still playing music. The people aren't in the room, but you know, we are still playing for people. And you know, we, we were, what we actually did in the end was we brought in a live element of, uh, you know, getting our fan club in on a Zoom Oh, wow. And they could actually Kinda be like in this, the yeah. call and they could like, you know, you would see them jamming a little bit out of time because it's a little delayed. Um, and that was, you know, that kind of like, that was pretty fun, honestly. And and, and also we, we connected with some of our fans in a far more like, like close way than we ever would have like with a few breathless moments after the show. Hey, can we get a selfie? Hey, cool, bud. Yeah. You know, now we actually like hang out for like half an hour, 45 minutes sometimes on the Zoom call afterwards and chat with everyone and like, I mean, so many really cool better, stories. Yeah, it's amazing to connect with people in this way. So there's definitely been silver linings, but yeah, to answer your question, Dave and I definitely were like, in the beginning it was like, <laughs> I mean, I we know. haven't not flown like this in How six do I months. I play this ever. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not being in a plane for this How long. I, How do I play this thing? <laughs> That's exactly how you play it. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> 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 it's so interesting because you guys are such um you guys are such globe trotters like you all guys have these epic tours across america very often you guys have residency in places like ibiza you've been in brazil a lot um it's such a pleasure to see you in south africa but you guys really do have followings all over the world and now strangely during covid you had an excuse to not just i guess connect with one group of them but to like spend some serious time with fans from everywhere it must have been epic it has been i mean that's definitely been one of the huge silver linings um, it's also been it's been quite an interesting playing music in a in a situation where um, you know there's not like loud like sound and weird like acoustic issues and yeah. all that kind of stuff you know playing in a in a 
you know, controlled, in a controlled environment where you could hear yourself nicely and there was no excuse for not playing well and you know, guess it's not a can be can be good and bad, but uh, you know I think that, that was that's been pretty cool and uh, you know we've uh, you know got we've got to spend some more time like some quality time with our instruments and you know get some and and it's also freed us from certain you know aspects of like live shows where there's no you know if you're playing in a dance club people want to dance so you, yeah. you can't play like a, a down tempo tune but if you're streaming something into everyone's living rooms hey man you like it's almost like anything. There's a lot more creative license for there's, sure. There's a lot more musical license, you know, you can like, you can really just do something that you would do for the musical hell of it, not for, not because, okay, this song's really going to get people yeah. going now. You know? We were on yeah. a call just now with our record label and then they were just saying, you know, like, you know, the, there are other artists who are kind of prelim primarily making the dance floor bangers are kind of holding back a lot of their releases because yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's no points. Like, what do you, what is everyone going to be doing with these like <laughs> festival smashers? You've got nowhere to play them. And no one's going to be like, let's pop that on the TV while I make pasta. <laughs> <laughs> put that on in the shower. People are going to be like slipping and falling in the shower. With that music. <laughs> we don't want that. I guess it's really uh, uh, exciting creatively because you guys have made a lot of different kinds of music and a lot of it is great for a jewel, but I vividly remember when Moonwalk Away came out, what a massive hit that was. And uh, the interesting samples of like, you know, like astronauts actually going to the moon, it was really, really, really sonically cool and a pleasure to play on the radio. So if you guys have been decoupled for a little while from the pure jewel mindset, then that's really exciting. Have, how have you been filling your time? Has it been hard to continue to play music and to be creative without this live element? Have you taken up some bizarre hobbies that you can do inside? Taking banana bread. Oh my <laughs> word. Oh, dude, that is your no, side no. of the world. We never did that. So no, much banana really bread. Oh, drowning. So much banana bread. Um, <laughs> oh, I, mean, I mean, like, uh, Definitely learn to make a few cocktails I didn't know how to make before. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, force them on Dom every night again after a stream. Um, <laughs> they definitely have got better in quality as the six oh, months nice. have uh, progressed. Um, we are making some biltong because you can't really oh, wow. get. Well, Ooh. you can get some. There are some people making biltong out here, but it's kind of expensive and, and it's you know. It's not as good as Dave's. Yeah, Dave makes the best. I'm, only, I'm not even joking. Like Dave, apart from being a fantastic saxophonist and producer, has just discovered his second calling in life, which is making built on uh, like <laughs> flipping Thanks, high end stuff. Like, wait, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to quickly qualify. Maybe you'll be able to see this, but this is this is what we're talking about here. That's a piece of Dave's rare, medium rare, I guess you could call that. I don't know if it's technically legal, but it tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like imagine. Camembert or brie, Camembert <laughs> or brie, but like <laughs> the beef equivalent, and that's what you got going there. So uh, you guys are if you're lucky enough to try Dave's spilt on. You're a lucky man. Yeah, you, but I mean, you guys are a land of the free now. You don't have President Ramaphosa telling you what to and not to do. So I'm sure you should be allowed to try. I actually wanted to ask because I remember very vividly not being in South Africa when uh, Nelson Mandela died. And that was very difficult for me because I find in moments of huge crisis or huge difficulty, when a whole society together is feeling the same emotion, suddenly I really in that moment wished I was with uh, my family, where I grew up and where I came from, I imagine it's similar for people who weren't here when we won the World, we won the World Cup last year. Have you guys kind of missed South Africa quite a lot in this time? Of course. Is that a rhetorical we, question? We always, I, mean, I think, you know what, we always miss it. Um, I think you can see by our tour schedule every year that, you know, we, that's why we're always coming back, you know. We, you know, a lot of our family and a lot of our friends are, you know, still are in South Africa and like, we we drawn there like a we're like like a moth to the flame. Honestly, you know? it's the B twelve shot we need every year. <laughs> we need to come back to South Africa and just get vitamin Cape Town. We were supposed sure. to come back in July, you know. We were super oh, fun, wow. but we couldn't make it in July. And uh, we, you know, our our sights are set for December. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can we'll hold fingers for that. Well, yeah, well, and uh, you know, if that doesn't happen, then you know, hopefully we can. How about January? Can, How about February? How about March? <laughs> How about April? For the end of summer, you know. So we, we're definitely, you know, we are we are coming, we are planning, and uh, as soon as they'll let us, we'll be there. Excellent. Actually, links into this song because this song is called this one coming out on Friday. It's called Forever Free, and honestly, when we were writing this, it just felt like the perfect um, kind of net, like moment for the song in a way because even if we are locked down and we are restricted in whatever ways wherever it is we are on the world like 
one place we will always be free is our minds and our imagination. And like sure. the song really is that kind of feeling. It's just, you know, we're in this situation, we've got to make lemonade with the lemons. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something that we've, we've, we've all struggled with. So um, I think it's, that's what we try to bring into the songs. And like historically, we've always been a band that's bringing out music with these sort of uh, uplifting titles, Get Busy Living or whatever it might be. Um, so it's actually, the ten year, it's actually the ten year celebration of the old that old nugget. <laughs> oh, there it is! <laughs> I've still got exactly that print. Uh, what is my mother does in the CD sack? I think it's in between like Bob Marley and Johnny Clegg. It's really, really close oh, to us. Oh, so that's some good company there. Um, that's a serious you know, list. But it's also quite exciting as we um, we 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 we're starting to um, produce our entire catalog on vinyl. And wow, we found this okay. most incredible vinyl um, uh, producer who makes this super high-end, high-quality stuff. And uh, we've we actually just about to receive caught in the loop on a oh, double wow. 180 gram vinyl. It is amazing. Let me just tell you, <laughs> it sounds incredible, but it looks incredible. Just being on that big format with that cool artwork and like it's like really a trip down memory lane. Guaranteed, no one's listened to Caught in the Loop more than Dave and I while we were making it and then having to perform it. So when we got it on vinyl, Dave was playing it and it was like rediscovery. It was like meeting, I think we made, we made this clip earlier, just like meeting a, a family, like a family member you haven't seen in years. It was like, you know, like a cousin that came and you're like, what, how are you doing? You know, and listening to those tracks on in that format. And it's like a ritual listening to vinyl, you know, like you, you get to experience the music in a different way. It's not just tap your screen and then, oh, I'm getting bored of this track next. You're kind of forced to like, experience it how it was made and um yeah i think for for all the fans out there uh, we're super excited to release that on vinyl so keep an eye i wish that. i could show you guys because i'm sure i'll try to add to my collection but i got all my vinyl sitting right here next to the computer and you're right i mean one of my favorite things to do because you know people associate vinyl with like huge ancient classics or like deeply moving music and then i pull out um, jack paris cool ass Eka, and i play it on 180 and people lose their minds <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and it's never sounded better, right? <laughs> never sounded better. It's the difference between a candle or like an incandescent light bulb versus like exactly. your fluorescent light bulb in the kitchen. You're like, yikes, I don't look good in this. <laughs> Vinyl's like putting the candles on and you're like, damn, this is, I look better now. And the, <laughs> it's and more the, romantic. <laughs> Dave and Tom from Goldfish, I want to ask you one more quick question. Thank you so much for your time. I know you've already given me 15 minutes. Um, I know that you spoke briefly about Forever Free already, and it sounds like a really, really great message and energy. Uh, I just wanted to know a little bit more about what we, we, we can expect sonically um, and like how, how the creative process came together. Was this a COVID uh, lockdown project track? Has, have you been sitting on it for a while? Um, so sonically, it's kind of like a mixture between Moonwalk Away and Take Back Tomorrow. Oh. You know, like, a, like they had a they had an illicit child. <laughs> and it came out in 2020, a colonial, <laughs> and uh, um, I'm, I we worked guess, on it for quite a while. I mean, it was it's pre-corona been, as well. It, was, it, it started like it definitely started pre. Um, we've been, um, you know, sort of trying to conjure up, you know, this ultimate version of the song and really make something that was, uh, you know, a, like a got you in the feels because it's, there's so many moments in the song where. That, that was like ready to happen. So we really had to like harness that. Um, and on top of that, uh, we uh, we got together with our our animating buddies, Mike Scott and uh, Matt Tarot, and we created this amazing music video, which is going to come out on Tuesday next week. And uh, it's it's like a you know it's like a creation all in its own, just the music video itself, because you know it's actually the tenth animated music video we're putting out as well which Amazing. is like pretty exciting um and we we're just we we're just super stoked to be able to get it together for this song because it really it really like felt like it wanted to have this kind of video treatment for it because it's yeah like, we can't always make those music videos for every like, track we make and it's like anthemic yeah. and it's it's like a you know it's got a feel like a positive like feel to it and we kind of felt like this is the song that everyone needs about now you know Absolutely. One of my favorite animated uh, music videos was, I think, 
is 1 million views, which is also a personal favorite of mine. So that was, I'm really, really, really excited to see the wow. latest one. And, and I mean, you guys wow. have a really, really fantastic kind of distinctive illustrative style that's associated, visual style that's associated with you guys. So I'm excited for that. Guys, oh, thank you. Cool you're going to like this Wait, one. So just before you go, the cool part about it is that um, Forever Freeze music video starts at the end of 1 million views. Are you guys the yeah. gorillas? Can we just relax? <laughs> <laughs> the Gerold, the Geraldfish. Yeah, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate hey, it. I'm so thanks, excited man. to play it out and hopefully see you guys on the other side when you when you when you get back. It'd be yeah, lovely. Man. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Dan. Bye, guys. And enjoy the rest of your day. I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> Have a good Stay day. Stay tight, Bri. <laughs> awesome. Cheers, Ciao. guys. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh. Good hope. FM.